When you think of the Smithsonian, you probably picture all the impressive museums lining the National Mall in Washington, D.C. But for 100 years, the Smithsonian has also been running a tropical research institute thousands of miles south in Panama. Senior national and environmental correspondent Ben Tracy takes us to this unique scientific outpost in the middle of one of the busiest waterways in the world. So this is your ride to work? Yep, it is. Got to get in the boat to get to the island. Helene Muller Landau has one of the more unusual commutes in the scientific community. She rides to work alongside giant container ships heading down the Panama Canal. It's a pretty cool commute to work. Indeed. And this is her office, Barro, Colorado Island, the world's oldest continuously studied tropical forest. So we're here in the tropical rainforest and on cue, here comes the tropical rains. Absolutely. It's amazing for a tropical site because it has a 100 year uninterrupted legacy of research, which gives us a really strong foundation of knowledge about the plants and animals here. Muller Landau leads a research team using drones to survey the health of the tree canopy. There's more than 500 species of trees on this island, which have been studied and measured for decades. It's also part of a worldwide network called Forest Geo, which monitors 7 million trees on 77 sites in 29 countries to determine the health of our planet's main ally in the fight against human-caused climate change. One of the great services tropical forests do is basically locking up a lot of carbon that would otherwise essentially change the climate. Trees suck planet warming carbon dioxide out of the air through photosynthesis. 46% of the world's living carbon pool is stored in tropical forests. But when those trees burn down in wildfires or are cut down in places like the Amazon rainforest, all that stored carbon is released back into the atmosphere, causing more global warming. All of those trees are carbon. Josh Tewksbury is director of the Smithsonian Tropical Research Institute in Panama, which has operated on Barro, Colorado Island for a century. Why does the Smithsonian run an island in the middle of the Panama Canal? So to answer the question, you have to go back to the creation of the country of Panama. Backed by the United States, Panama broke away from Colombia in 1903, allowing for construction of the Panama Canal to be completed by the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. Digging the canal created this massive lake in the middle of the country, turning a once forested hillside into Barro, Colorado Island, named for its red clay soil. The Smithsonian sent scientists to start a research station here. Science in the United States was the Smithsonian, and therefore we came and we've had a continued presence on the island, uh, sort of been doing research there since about 1923. This is where tropical forest research was born, and it holds the world's most complete scientific record of plant and animal life in these unique ecosystems. Has the mission, the focus changed in this era of rapid climate change? The urgency around that mission has shifted dramatically in the last 30 to 40 years. Thinking about life on a sustainable planet as a, as a major emphasis of what we do. Our continued burning of fossil fuels is a threat to the so-called lungs of the planet. In a new study in the journal Nature, scientists found that places on Earth are now so hot that tropical leaves may lose their ability to perform photosynthesis and die. Good. Yep. All set. It makes the research here on the island even more critical. The first few meters is not a problem. Which can include climbing a nearly 150-foot okay. tall weather tower. This is why you had me sign that form. That houses sensors collecting data on the health of this forest. We run a network of sensors spread over all of P P Panama. Sergio Dos Santos is a project manager and says some sensors help determine whether the forest is absorbing or emitting carbon dioxide. So that's that sensor all the way up there. The white sensor, it's a, it's a carbon flux sensor. There's other things, you know, there's, a, there's a rainfall sensor right I'm there. I'm trying not to look yeah. down there. <laughs> Why? I like looking at the sensors so, up above okay, me. Okay. This is a beautiful view though. Yeah, it's nice. I yeah. mean, you can see the canal and the lake. And... Yeah, you can see everything, it's beautiful. And while this island may be run by the Smithsonian, it's a museum without walls, where nature's art is always on display. It's an amazingly special place. I think 
likely the most stable part of the U.S.-Panama relationship over the last hundred years, and we're looking forward to being that stable part of it for the next hundred years. For CBS Saturday Morning, I'm Ben Tracy in Panama. Nice work by Ben climbing oh, up that yeah. tower. Oh, yeah. Producer Chris Spinder, I'm going to guess Roger Masterton was the photographer. I'm not certain. <laughs> Don't know. But Don't know. that was amazing important, work. Important work yeah. done there. And it just eye-opening to what the job we have ahead of us in saving our planet. I, I thought it was interesting, not just what they're doing there, but the fact that they're monitoring 77 oh, million I know. From trees there. Yeah. around the world. Unbelievable wow. stuff. That really is something.